Hey everyone, welcome to another rain day vlog where we'll be showing you guys some things today in the rain. Right now we're in New Hampshire traveling north on Route 3. This morning I came in through the town of Earl, New Hampshire, followed that west until I hit Route 3 and I've been traveling north for the past couple of hours. In about two miles we're gonna hit the Canada border where we are going to turn around. And when we turn around on the way back, I'm gonna stop at each of the Connecticut lakes and I'm gonna show you their water levels. Two of them, they look like they're completely full. Now we go down to Lake Francis. It's not at capacity, but it's close. I wanna look at their discharge. There's almost always a giant whirlpool spinning in there. Two days ago, Northern New England got flash flooding like three plus inches of rain in only like 20 minutes. I even filmed some of that. Yesterday we got another good amount of soaking. Today we're expected to get as many as five inches in northern New England, so we're driving around for potential flooding. As soon as I'm done up in this area of northern New Hampshire, I want to go back down to the White Mountain area. That area with all the steep mountains can pretty quickly collect water and flash flood, especially since the ground is already saturated and it just cannot take anymore. Today we're going to try to avoid most of the dirt roads because if we actually get five inches of rain in a quick period of time, a lot of those roads will likely wash out and I don't want to get trapped on there. We have come across so many missing bridges after storms. That could happen when we're out there. So we're going to avoid those dirt roads today. Maybe tomorrow we'll take a walk or a drive out there when it's a bit lower. To my left is the third Connecticut Lake. And the fourth Connecticut Lake is coming up. We will not see that, but I have videos of it. You have to go on a hike in the woods to be able to see that. It's a hike that goes right along the border. You actually get to crisscross it a few times, even if you don't have a passport. You saw those guys right there in the road. They were putting cables across the road to measure how many vehicles actually use the road so they can base their construction or whatever off of it. So we're about to turn around up here at the border. There's a parking lot, and then you can just go right onto the hiking trail. I just did the paperwork and stuff. I'll have my passport in about two months, and maybe we'll take a trip up here. I'm curious to see what the logging roads of Canada are like. They probably have, I don't even think I'm exaggerating, maybe a million miles worth of logging roads. They are everywhere. All of Canada is basically just woods and dirt roads. Most of their population lives below the U.S., meaning below our highest point. So up there is all rural. And here we are approaching the border. The speed limit is 15. And then we're going to go on our way back. We'll stop at each of the dams, get out for a little bit, show you what's going on. So the 4th Connecticut Lake is absolutely tiny. When we visited, it looked like the beavers are actually responsible for keeping the lake there. We went there last year during the drought, and no, that was two years ago, I think. Last year, I don't think we even came up here. So we're just gonna loop it around here. They got a little turn around here. So even big trucks can just simply turn around. So here's the border building. And though, like they finally repainted all the parking to make it more clear. The first time I came here, I drove through the gate and got the car searched because when I was looking at satellite, it looked like the only parking area was between their two border buildings. So here we are coming back in. Well, we didn't leave, but coming right back in. New Hampshire buckle up law under 18, common sense for all. I don't understand why most states even have a seatbelt law if you're over 18, I don't see the point, but I wear a seatbelt no matter what anyways. Even click it on just going a couple hundred feet down the road. It's a good habit to have. So here we are, just going for a ride in the rain. Hopefully it picks up more. Today's supposed to be a wall-to-wall -wall rainy day. I woke up, it was raining. Almost every point of the day has a 90% chance of rain or higher. Most of the week it's been sunny during the day with torrential downpours every single afternoon triggered by the heat. 
This week is going to be very cool. Temperatures are mainly in the 60s and 70s for highs with rain every single day in the forecast. I'm good. I'm glad I got my lawn mowed yesterday because I will not be able to do it again for the foreseeable future.
I don't know why you're complaining about your car getting dirty and muddy. You're the one who chose to go down a dirt road. Most of us go on those roads because we enjoy it. We like that they're treacherous. If they were in good shape, they wouldn't be fun anymore. We take responsibility and go out there on our own risk because it's fun. You should have the brain to go underneath bridges that look crooked and inspect them before you're going across them. You also take responsibility for sinkholes that may open up as you go over them. That's just the risk of going off-road. It's not the company's fault. They're nice enough to leave their private roads open for you to explore. Just because they're not maintaining a certain area, because they're not using it, they're not required to do that by law. And I would never live in a state where you could sue a property owner for getting hurt doing something on their own property when they were nice enough to actually let you go out there. I've got stuck in sinkholes before for hours, one time 19 hours at a time, and that was my own fault. I didn't know the sinkhole was there. The road was perfectly dry and it just opened up into like mud, and that's my own fault. Is it going to stop me from going on these roads? No, it is not. All that did was convince me to get a winch line that I can move to either end of the vehicle. A lot of times when I come out here early in the spring, I am the first vehicle to go down thousands of miles of road. And I have to inspect things because the road is severely deteriorated, sometimes eroded, sometimes we come across a crooked bridge, we gotta go underneath and make sure that's still structural. Why did it become crooked? Maybe just settling over the years of not using it, but we gotta see how that is before we go across it. It's unlikely you're gonna fall through a logging bridge. You might get a wheel that pops through it and you get stuck, but they're usually reinforced with very heavy duty beams. The deck rots out fast is what I'm saying. You just gotta drive exactly where the beams are, so you go underneath and look where they are first before going across it. If the bridge is crooked due to support erosion, we will not go across it, depending how bad it is. A lot of logging bridges don't have real foundations, they're just up on big blocks, so it's pretty easy for high water to erode them. A lot of those bridges are considered temporary, but on the main logging arteries, they'll often have poured foundations going deep into the bedrock so they don't wash out, especially over major rivers. Most of the little timber bridges we go over are on streams and stuff. A lot of times they build them to be temporary, and they don't do studies ahead of time to know how how much water goes across that stream. So that's why sometimes you come across missing bridges, missing pipes. The beavers also play a huge roll in destroying roads by plugging pipes and then we get these big storms and rainy days like, oh, I thought that was a moose at first. It's a backpacker. That guy got a big pack. That guy's a real hiker, backpacker. He got so much gear, it probably weighs over 100 pounds when he's carrying back there. He's not afraid to get wet. He's just going to wait for a dry day or set up his tent and hang out in there drying up. That guy's set for the long haul. I wonder where he's on his way to. And that looks like a guy who's out here to stay for months. All right, so this is the second Connecticut Lake. And this one definitely has a dam. I know the uh, first Connecticut Lake, they're doing so much construction today on that dam. It's a good thing because I showed guy, you guys in previous videos, it was in failing condition for a while. Uh. This is at capacity, it's topping. Looks pretty good. I think there's someone fishing here or some worker somewhere, there's a truck right there. So this dam doesn't look in bad condition at all. It's also not holding a severe amount of water. But the next dam is very tall and if it was to fail, especially with its deteriorating condition we've showed in the past, it would cause a nightmare downstream especially for Lake Francis, which is not a concrete dam. It's an earth dam, which could fail if the upstream huge reservoir was to fail. So it's good to see him doing construction on the place. So we're just gonna go right now and continue down the road a bit. Alrighty. There's no one on these roads, which is nice. The rain is keeping most people away today. Most people don't like the rain. I'd rather it be rainy than hot. I'd 
rather be rainy than dry. But this is a little bit too much rain this year, coming all at once. I need a couple days for it to dry out to actually get some things done. Yeah, this road, you know, well, actually, New Hampshire in general, some of their roads, they repave them all the time. Sometimes, because they have such a big budget for the DOT, they'll repave roads and replace bridges that were in great shape to begin with when you consider it to neighboring states, which have horrible roads. Any big city is going to have some horrible roads because that's not funded by the DOT. That's usually the town that has to take care of that. But this, these state roads are always in good shape. You see all these bumps and cracks? One year after paving, one winter will make all these cracks and basically destroy the road. Moisture gets underneath it. The ground is shifting around like crazy as it freezes. Up here we can get like four feet of frost, sometimes even more in this elevation. And when the ground freezes, it expands its water and it cracks and lifts up the road, making violent bumps and cracks you gotta avoid in the winter all over the place. Most of them settle back down pretty smooth and it's not a problem, but that's one of the reasons they have to repave roads like this every two or three years. It just becomes so bad, the damage. They repave roads like crazy this far north and that's why a lot of roads will remain dirt because it's such a hazard. Also, when you have erosion underneath these roads, it's way more dangerous on a paved road because it'll just suddenly give out. There's no signs of it usually ahead of time before the road just gives like a dirt road. Dirt road, you can see obvious erosion. It can be hiding underneath the pavement on a road like this. New Hampshire has the best DOT in roads I've ever seen, and I've been in, I think, 36 states. So far, the worst state still holds to be Massachusetts. Which is ironic because it's right next to New Hampshire. Doesn't look like these logging roads are very active this year. I passed a few log trucks today, but they were all empty. Most of the logging that happens in northern New Hampshire and gets shipped into Canada to sawmills. Then it's a lot of Canada sends most of the pressure treated products. Most of the pressure treated products you buy in the US are from Canada. Just a couple hundred miles north of where I am right now, up into Quebec, that's where most of those giant fires are burning that most of the country has been seeing the smoke from. I've been seeing the smoke. We have not had a clear day, even when it's not raining in weeks. There's just wildfire haze, you know? There is a good amount of sunshine filtering through it, but it is severely filtered. I haven't seen the blue sky much in the past month. Still a lot of wildfire smoke up here. They said the worst in like 20 years, the smoke in this area. We don't usually typically get wildfire smoke. I've never personally seen it around here before this year. But thankfully it's a very wet year. I don't think this rain is actually making it up into Canada yet. But I'm not worried about forest fires here for a while. Last year I was, my whole forest was crunchy, dead, dying, turning brown. This year it's greening up. Every single day being wet is bringing the decomposers in like crazy. Everything's turning green with moss. The microbes are going nuts, breaking things down. All my habitat piles we rake the forest into are crushing down and rotting real fast. You got things like slugs that are eating all that stuff, going crazy. Someone just texted me and I'll have to mess it back in just a little bit. Someone I love just texted me and I'll get back to them in just a few minutes. Ooh, do you see all the baby turkeys right there? Oh, I, I've seen some baby turkeys this week that were like the size of baseballs. Teeny little fuzzballs racing around to try to keep up with the parent. This week I've seen some of the smallest baby moose I've ever seen in my life in my 
vlog I made of moose watching a couple days ago. I've seen an uptick of deer, which we've never seen before. That's not a necessarily a good thing. I don't like that. Moose, if you hit a moose, it's probably already in the road around a blind corner at night. They don't just dart out in front of cars. They're a slow animal. They're not skittish like a deer. Deer, they think you're a predator and they will try to race you and zigzag in front of you trying to confuse you because they don't understand they're going to get hit. That's the reason I don't like the deer. Deer hits are supposedly high in my state, although I typically don't see them often. I guess they're just hiding in a certain area and they're finally moving around. Earlier this year, I went to a part of northern Maine and had so many deer. The record for deer I've ever seen, I think, was in the Dakotas out west, Montana, um, Idaho. They, there were so many deer in those areas, open plain areas of grass, a lot of farms they're able to steal food from, which makes their population boom. All right, we are now, I think, approaching the next reservoir, which is the first Connecticut Lake. I, this is not the dam, I don't think. I, I think we have to go around a few more corners before we get to the dam. We'll take a look at that, but there's a lot of workers there, so we're probably not even going to get out. But I'll pull in the parking lot. You'll still have a great view. Yeah, the dam is in a couple more miles. This is just along it. This dam is actually up to capacity, despite it looks like they're working on it. And look at this. The rain is picking up a lot right now. Can't wait for the downpours we're expecting today. That'll look pretty cool. I don't know if this far north is actually getting the five inches of rain. The bullseye is supposed to be the White Mountains. That's why I'm heading back down there right now. Maybe if it actually happens, we'll do another vlog showing all the waterways. I kind of want to drive around Mount Washington, and then I want to drive around the North Conway area of New Hampshire, which floods a lot, and then we'll head back into Maine through Bethel and maybe even to that area of Maine I was showing you guys all the washouts last week. I made a video showing all the severe damage of all the roads washing out in Maine. There were so many washouts in Maine, the DOT ran out of cones. They were barely marked. Giant sinkholes in the middle of the road that were open and didn't even have cones around it. I had to back up dangerously next to big old holes in the asphalt. That area is going to get hit again. I bet all their temporary dirt fixes will wash out. Here we are at the dam. This reservoir has filled the capacity. Last year was not a... It was not that low. The lowest I've ever seen this reservoir, I believe, was two years ago, which was technically our driest year on record. Last year we had a drought. It wasn't our driest year, though, but it was our worst year for dieouts because it was... Um, the hottest year on record. Our average temperature this far north is 76 degrees. Last year it got to um, 91 was our average. We got a bunch of days near 100, which is unheard of this far north. You see the water spilling there to the left of the dam? It's full. And they're working on the deteriorating concrete. I've told you guys in vlogs for years, this dam looked very dangerous and they're finally fixing it. We're not gonna be able to get out. See, they have it blocked off because it's their construction area. You see, we can't see anything, but we'll come back up here when it's all done at some point. Um, what is this road here? Maybe we can drive down here a little bit. I don't, it doesn't go very far. This is like access for fishermen, I think. See, I can't help myself. Last week, I cleaned every nook and cranny of the truck after dust storms because we had like two days of dry weather which made the roads dust storms. It got in every nook and cranny. I have every little part in here cleaned super well. Then I took it off road again. Thankfully it was just mud on the outside and here we go again. But thankfully it's raining today. I won't have to wash anything. That's one good thing about the rain. Don't have to wash anything. No dust that makes its way in here. Yeah, you see this is like the start of a snowmobile trail which we are not going down there. No. I don't think this is a good road to be going down. Nothing says we can't, though. But like I said, I don't want to be on roads like this today. I do intend on there being a lot of dirt road washouts. 
when these huge downpours start happening. So yeah, this is basically just parking for fishermen who like to fish below the dam. There's a lot of fish down there because of the rapids. And I don't think this dam at all has a fish elevator or anything, so all the fish hanging around the bottom of the dam are like, we want to go upstream, but I don't think they can. And I think that's why there's always fishermen here. There's an abundance of fish that just can't go further upstream. I used to always believe that, well, it, it, it entirely depends on what you drive. I used to, people used to always tell me if you drive faster, you get better MPG. I get the best MPG if I'm going around 40. If I'm going about 40 miles an hour on these roads, being very conservative on the gas pedal, I can sometimes accomplish 25 MPG, but typically I get like 19 with this vehicle. On the highway, if it's flat, I can get 25. Yeah. Right now, I'm averaging 19. But if I go a little bit slower and take it more easy on the hills, you know. Like, there's hills everywhere. It's hard to get actually good MPG when you're in the mountains and rough terrain. to my area. This area being a bit further north, didn't have to deal with as much heat last year, so there's less to recover from. What the heck? Why is this guy going so slow? He's going 20 under. We'll pass him, or we're going to come across the gas station first. He's not out of state. It's not a tourist. expect slowness from tourists because they're looking around at the area. It's different to them. Well, this guy's turning anyways. That's probably why he's going slow. We're going to go to the next gas station, which is like a truck stop. There's no one around it. And I think it's even in sight. I wonder what gas prices are going to be like. I've been paying about three fifty nine in my area. If I drive down to Massachusetts, I can get a little better. I can get like 3.30 something a gallon. They usually don't drain the tank down this low. I wonder how many gallons we'll be able to take today. I'm gonna guess like 45. That'll give us like a 900 mile range. Um, 356. Not the worst. Let's gas up so we can drive around a bit more. So I got this thing here, which will start filling after my first tank. That's the gauge for my second fuel tank. And when my gas tank's low, I push this and it has a transfer pump. It's very slow. It takes 45 minutes to fill it back up, but it can fill the truck up again twice when this thing is full. It's a transfer pump. It takes 40 minutes because it only pumps like two liters a minute. It's very slow, but it's entertaining to watch the needle go up as you're driving. Slowly, but surely rising. There we go. Finally filled up. It did not take as much as I thought it was gonna. I don't know why 
why, but the second fuel gauge doesn't say I'm full, but I know I am. I think I have to start moving for that to do anything. Not yet. I think it's got a bump around or something. Yeah. The bottom light just turned green, and I think as I go, it's going to click up until full now. That's a cute little homemade camper. Alright, so now we're going to go down to the Lake Francis. And we're going to get out there, and I want to walk down to the discharge. There's always a good whirlpool there. They are not at capacity, they're, but they're very close to it. Their spillway is not going. It would be nice someday to actually see the spillway flowing. going to get heavier and heavier they say. I hope we get that three to five inches of rain. That'll be kind of interesting to see what happens. 
they, we already, the weatherman already said we should expect catastrophic flooding because everything's already soaked and un unable to absorb more water. Got some crows here eating something that someone threw out. Anytime I got leftover food, I'll throw it out for whatever can eat it so it don't go to waste. But it really bothers me sometimes when people are literally dumping trash out their windows. The other day I was following someone on a logging road with out-of-state plates and they just had the nerve to throw a big bag of junk out. So here we are at the lake. This boat ramp goes down so far. Well, I was here once that you could actually see the end of it. They couldn't put boats in the water anymore. You could probably go down so much. Like there was a huge beach here going out hundreds of feet. One time it was so dried up, I think two years ago, maybe three. I want to go up to Eagle Lake in Northern Maine. If we ever get a giant drought like that again, I missed my opportunity in 2020. It was so empty that the train bridge that's abandoned was fully out of the water. You could walk underneath it and I really want to see that. I've only been there when it was flooded and you could only have access with kayaks. Like it's so rotten and dilapidated you can just see the rails looping over all the rock supports because everything else rotted. It's been like a hundred years since they used it. And it, I think they also intentionally burned it down to stop people from crossing it. They burned down all the engines. Those train locomotives I've showed, they're so rusted out there. Even though they've been out there a hundred years, they're in very bad shape because they were in a wooden building that was burned down intentionally by the Forest Service for some reason. They didn't want people to get hurt on it or whatever. But they got in trouble later because somebody still owned those engines. Um, <clears throat> it's raining nice now, but back to what I was saying. I was following this idiot the other day. He had a nerve to throw a yellow bag full of garbage he was collecting right out his window onto a nice pristine wilderness road for no reason at all. You never know these days people are crazy. I ended up passing that guy because he was being slow and not letting me pass. So eventually I found a wide spot. I just went around him and just blasted him with dust. I, you know, I you don't trust people these days. You don't know how crazy someone could be, but in my head, I wanted to so bad to stop in the road in front of them and make them clean that up. But people are crazy and you don't know what they could do. So we're gonna turn right here. This goes to the dam. We are now below Lake Francis. It's not at capacity, but it probably will be by the end of the week. Every day is rain, very heavy rain. We could get up to 10 more inches by the end of the week. Five alone today. We got three yesterday, a couple the day before that. Then we had a couple dry days. They fixed this. This was a... No, no, they didn't. Maybe. Uh, yeah, this was more pothole fill last time we were here. This is the spillway. I've never seen it run before, but it looks pretty awesome. There's no one around me. I'm going to stop on the bridge just for a moment so I can show you out the window. Oh, there is actually water, but its I don't think it's topping. I think what you're seeing here might just be coming through the ground because you see up here, that's just bedrock it's built on. It might be seeping through. If we zoom up to the dam, maybe to get to capacity, maybe it has to be, you know, up to the top of that wood. Maybe it's going under the wood. Maybe that's why it looks a little low. That might be it. Maybe it's just seeping through the bottom of those wooden timbers. All right, I'm getting a lot of rain in here. I don't know why they put the window switches and stuff right up top where it can get all wet in a truck. I don't understand. My old car, it was down inside the door where you could have the window open without getting your switch panel wet. Yeah, they filled in so many potholes. This was a big mud hole that you could drive through. So now we're below the dam. I want to get out right here just for a few minutes. It's, pre it's raining pretty hard, so we won't linger long. I want to show you the spillway, which is right, or the discharge right below this building. I'm gonna get out just for a minute and walk down there. I came here in the winter once, the snow was over that fence. 
you could easily fall into there once. Not gonna linger too long. That diesel generator's running. You can smell it. See, it always makes a big whirlpool here. It always looks so awesome. I want to come here someday when it's really going hard. There's been times I've seen in other people's YouTube videos it's blasting out of here so fast. And take a look at that fog. That's awesome. Near my house, there's a river not too far away. And sometimes at night, on days like this, with the high humidity, the water's much colder. So it's making the fog. It rolls in across the whole yard. I love seeing that. back on the road. I kind of like the smell of that diesel thing burning right there. Although diesel does give me a headache after a while if I have to deal with it for a long time. A vehicle that like a diesel vehicle that leaks exhaust into the cab. That bothers me after a while like the school buses used to do. Don't mind the smell but gives me a headache sometimes. All right, heading back out. That spillway barely runs. There's big trees growing in it down below the bridge. I think in New Hampshire they are ma maintained by the DOT, right? Because it's a route. I don't think the town maintains the main drag. I don't know, though. I know in Massachusetts they do not, usually. And you'll be on a nice state highway, then it goes into a pothole. Such a horrible road going into a town. Then when you're back out, the DOT has it nice and paved again. On most of their state highways in Mass. But then you get on something like the Mass Turnpike, it's a pothole nightmare despite the giant tolls. What's this? Is this like a portable house this guy has to the left for going out on ice to go ice fishing? That's what it looks like to me. It's got a wood stove pipe or maybe a, some sort of gas stove, whatever, exhaust it. figured it out. It's 68 degrees out and it's not going to really get any warmer. Perfect weather. 
don't know what I touched. That was took me a minute to figure out how to get the temperature showing in here again.